Okay, so what you're seeing right now is video footage from quite possibly three of the best smartphone cameras you're gonna see this year. We've got the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, iPhone 11 Pro, as well as the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And let me know what you think to the audio quality of each of these three devices. We're off to a pretty good start, kicking things off with the standard wide angle cameras. All three phones can record 4K video at 60 frames per second. And you can probably tell yourself, in terms of the actual quality, there isn't all that much in it iPhone has the most natural colors, whilst Huawei and Samsung, they push up the vibrance just that little bit, although this isn't necessarily a disadvantage. What I would say though is that Huawei's dynamic range is not quite as good as the other two. In harsh situations, you'll find that shadows, it doesn't expose them quite as well. We're also gonna be scoring these smartphones, one score for every single category, and if you want the full explanation for the scoring system, it's in the description, but long story short, more points equals better. Huawei's Mate 30 Pro has a pretty massive three times optical zoom, more than the two times of the other two flagships, and what this translates to is not just being able to get closer to subjects while keeping things sharp, but also Huawei's lens produces some pretty nice cinematic background blur. Now, also with the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, the company's introduced a brand new ultrawide camera. They call it the Cinema Camera because of how it's specialized for taking video. But whilst this is gonna come in handy later, in most day-to-day -day scenarios, you're just more likely to notice the fact that it's less wide than the other two, as opposed to it actually recording anything in higher quality. Also, the iPhone is the master of consistency here. Between its three lenses, the color profile remains pretty much unchanged, whereas on ultrawide, Huawei and Samsung really punch up the contrast. On a bit of a side note, I'm also launching a massive iPhone 11 giveaway with Philip from Everything Apple Pro. All the info for that is going to be in the description below. Anyways, both Huawei and Samsung can also do portrait mode video, although as an effect, I personally don't think this is reliable enough to be something I'd actually use. But in terms of which one does it better, it's Huawei. The Galaxy Note 10 also has audio zoom, the ability to zoom into an object and hear directional audio from whatever is in frame. It's done well, but not hugely important in the scheme of things. Stabilization is something I've been itching to test ever since I first saw the Mate 30 Pro. But one thing to clarify, when you're shooting standard one-time zoom video, we're not actually using the new cinema camera because that's an ultrawide, but even then the stabilization is absolutely fantastic on all three. If we scale this resolution down to 1080p, then stabilization only improves across the board. Each of these devices has its own super steady feature and they work. Also, in this test, I'm adding a new category, ultra-wide stabilization, as I'm just starting to see more and more of this camera being used for video. So actually, none of these cameras have OIS, but part of me was expecting Huawei's to come out on top, considering that this new cinema camera was exactly for this scenario, but to be honest, they're all really good. Thankfully, Huawei's slow motion is outstanding. In all aspects, it's been given a huge leg up from past generations. So that means it can now record continuous slow motion at a higher quality than before, higher than both other phones, but also it has the ability to capture 7,680 frame per second slow-mo. I've got a lot of thoughts on this. It's so slow it practically stops time in its tracks, completely unprecedented on a phone. But there are a few caveats. First of all, if you look closely, you can see that the subjects that are moving, they're not sharp in every frame, which means that we're always using software to fill in extra frames. Plus, it is so slow that you'll have to time your slow-mo impeccably to not miss what you were trying to capture. iPhone is the only camera that can also take slow-mo on the front camera, or as they like to call it, the slow fee. The quality is good, all things considered, but I think you're much less likely to want to slow-mo yourself than whatever's happening in front of you. Now for the big one, and in fact the category I've placed the most weight on, daytime or reasonably well-lit photos, because that is the majority of what people use their cameras for. Long story short, there isn't much in it. Each phone has its own style, its own colors, its own sharpness levels, but they are all great. Even actually, if we crop into this shot 20 times, you can see detail is pretty much identical. The main difference just being that Samsung uses a stronger noise reduction algorithm, which makes images a little softer, but have less grain. You can switch the Huawei to taking 40 megapixel shots, but generally this isn't a lot better and restricts what you can do with the camera. The iPhone 11 Pro has a very slight edge when coping with difficult dynamic range scenarios, but yeah, very close. If you were wanting to capture objects that are further away, then you probably guessed it, Huawei is going to be better. It's just got more optical zoom, there's not actually a lot to it. This is another one of those examples though, where you can see how well the iPhone retains its color consistency. As we go here from two times to 10 times, Huawei and Samsung, they both completely shift the way the image actually looks. 
The story with ultrawides is not as straightforward. If we crop into the ultrawide shots, then you can see that this new cine camera on the Huawei is marginally better than the other two. But it comes at the cost of range. The field of view is so much smaller on the Huawei, and whilst this does mean a little bit less distortion, it also means that I think the shots are just a lot less dramatic. That said, macro shots on the Huawei are fantastic. Combining a close focusing distance with a wide aperture is a recipe for tasty looking natural background blur. And speaking of background blur, portrait mode. iPhones have always won this category, and I don't think that's changed here. Apple's effect is generally subtler, but that often works better. This picture is a good example of what I mean. Apple's colours are warmer and more natural looking, and if we crop into my face, you can see that whilst it has missed the mark a little with edge detection, it's done the more important job of making sure my face is sharp. It is great to see that all three allow you to take portrait mode photos on both wide-angle and telephoto lenses, which does mean on the Huawei you'll be getting a whole three times closer. Samsung still has a few issues with not working from a distance. Okay, this is a big category, night mode photos. The 11 is the first time the iPhone has ever had a night mode, and it really makes a difference. Huawei has been a clear leader in night mode photography ever since the P20 Pro, but all of a sudden it's got competition that can trade blows with it in many aspects. There isn't one consistent winner here, but there are a few consistent trends. Huawei always does a better job with skies. I'm guessing it has something built into its scene recognition that seriously polishes night skies up. I took this shot with all three on a tripod, and whilst the note is seriously dark and the iPhone grainy, Huawei's photo is crisper and punchier, although I don't actually think the sky was purple when I took it. Mind you, whilst it might look it next to these other two, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is not at all bad at night time. This is just a seriously dark environment. Also, massive shout out to Star Trails mode on the Mate 30 Pro. If you have a tripod, it's an absolutely amazing feature, and better than trying to achieve the effect manually. Now we're going to start to see how the Mate's new ultrawide camera comes in. It's a little bit hit and miss, but whilst both Apple and Samsung see a big drop in clarity when switching to ultrawide, and in fact Apple's night mode stops working altogether, Huawei's can still look spectacular. This shot right here was literally all three phones handheld pointed straight up at the sky, and it was so dark that the iPhone's ultrawide literally picked up nothing. Samsung's a tiny bit, but the difference is jaw dropping. In contrast, whilst Huawei can zoom in more optically, the nighttime quality of these shots is not really any better than the iPhone or the Galaxy, and in fact, Samsung has the best dynamic range when zoomed in. I was getting a lot of requests about flash quality as well, and it's great on all three. Huawei's is a little brighter, but the end result isn't as out there as some rumours were suggesting. Even capturing objects in motion is about on par with the other two. You're probably starting to see a picture here. The Mate 30 Pro is really good in low light, and this trend continues into video. Using the standard wide angle, the iPhone is grainier and the Note a little softer, but the only caveat with Huawei is that it's not as good as the iPhone at controlling really bright spots within the dark. As you probably guessed then, when we switch to the ultrawide, as with photos, whilst the Apple and the Samsung completely tank, Huawei maintains itself, able to still capture sharp details in the curtains in this scene. If you take this into ultra low light, they're all pretty crippled, but still the Mate noticeably less so. Weirdly, though, every single time I tested it, zooming on the iPhone in low light video resulted in actually less degradation than Huawei. Alright, so just before we start tying this comparison to a close, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus takes the best selfies in low light. Its strength lies in brightening the face whilst keeping the image fairly sharp. But as soon as we get to middling or high amounts of light, I prefer the iPhone 11 Pro's result. Shots are more realistic in terms of skin tone, and the new wide-angle lens captures even more than the Note's already wide camera. I also just prefer the way the portrait mode looks on the iPhone. It feels a little bit more natural, and generally speaking, edge detection is better. With video, if you were thinking of vlogging, for example, Huawei is still left at 1080p on the front, which is fine, but at the same time it is a quarter of the 4K resolution that the other two phones can do. The iPhone has the widest angle and is also less prone to overexposure than the other two, and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus has the most stable footage. And just before we wrap this comparison up, audio, or a microphone test, this is actually one of the most important categories. Now testing smartphone audio, starting with the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Now we've got the iPhone 11 Pro, let me know if you think that is better. And finally, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Yeah, let me know which one you think is best in the comments below. And that leaves us with the final results. We've got Huawei with 813, iPhone with 769, and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus with 751. 
So here's the takeaway, the three phones you're looking at right now, these are three incredibly well-rounded, top-tier flagship camera phones. But the conclusion is this. During the day, the iPhone 11 Pro is the most consistent and usually the most impressive camera. But because this lead is not that huge and because it loses quite significantly in zoom and other low light conditions, Huawei just about takes it on balance. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be amazing. And don't forget to check out the giveaway. All the rules are in the description below. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.